Good evening, everybody. Happy holidays. Hi. This is the Unshaved and Shaved podcast. Or talk show, whatever one you want to... (laughs) Whatever you choose works for me. So, what are we going to talk about this week? How's the hot chocolate? Oh, little Tim Hortons hot chocolate. This... This episode is brought to you by Tim Hortons Hot Chocolate. Unofficial Clean sponsor piece. of the of the Unshaved Shave podcast. That's our child worried about well, her child worried about the internet. So, last time we covered Dolly Parton's vaccine program, or funding, that was kind of radical, and then it was all over the news the next week. I gotta give you props for hitting that on the head. Yep, good old independent research. I've done a few weeks of sit-down stand-up comedy with the THC virtual open mic with Don Barris. I call it kitchen comedy because you do it all in the kitchen. Cooking up something good. Cooking up something good in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm wearing the same clothes as I was two weeks ago. I think you've been wearing the same clothes for two weeks. Mm, That's a possibility, too. Show my belly. What the boys want to see. Ooh. I showed my belly. I'm not showing mine. No, you don't have to. Your six-pack abs. Oh, it's hot in here. I closed the window. I'm just, like, sweating bullets. You're drinking hot chocolate. Oh, that could be it. Chocolate's going to my head. So, lockdowns. Lockdown, yeah. Ontario's going into lockdown. UK, lockdown. Serious lockdown. I also read today that not only did Canada cancel flights, that they cut the borders, uh, they closed the borders with France, with Scotland, with, like, pretty much everybody who surrounds them. Interesting. I wonder how bad it's going to be. Well, I I don't know. Is it going to be worse than, like, the first year of this? All of a sudden, there's this new strain that's highly contagious. I thought the first one was highly contagious. Yeah, me too. (laughs) How does something become more contagious or less contagious? You just blink at each other and you catch it. (laughs) Yeah, no staring each other in the eyes. It's crazy. Goddamn dirty, germy people. I'm glad you said germy people. Don't want to. Well, I'll be living in bubbles soon. Bubble boy. Yeah, I know. I don't even know if I'm legally allowed to be at your house right now. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you're allowed, like, one close contact if you're a single person. No, thank God. I'm your, I'm your close contact. I'd be going insane if I had to sit at home all this time by myself. Yeah. Yeah. We should have a newspaper. We could read news headlines. Well, it's almost Christmas. We could talk about that. It's December 22nd. Just past the winter solstice. 
you're supposedly in this big competition for the best gingerbread house at your work? That's true. Yeah. How do you think you're going to place? I, I just don't know. It's, it's so hard to say. They pulled in some impartial judges. You know, I didn't really get to see the other team's houses up close and in person, so... Uh, I'll, I'll have to put a picture of your gingerbread house on here for everyone mm -hmm. to see. I'm pretty proud of it, regardless. Oh, I wish I could show everyone how bad I am at rapping. How not to rap presents. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah. What did you just say? Nothing. You're waiting to see how the results turn out? Yeah, we find out tomorrow. See, I haven't shaved for like two weeks, and I've really pressured her to shoot this with me so I can finally get this dirt off my chin. Well, you could have shaved any time. You just are insisting on calling whatever this is the shaved and unshaved and like the idea of <laughs> shaving halfway through. Yeah, so the first half I'm going to have this wonderful scruff. And In then case there was any misconception about the name, it all has to do with <laughs> Stefan's beard and nothing to do with whatever I shave. That might be for a later date. Upload it on Pornhub. Oh, there's something. <clears throat> Pornhub supposedly axed like hundreds of thousands of videos. I thought I saw something about that. I didn't read it though. Trying to curb exploitation or revenge porn, shit like that. Child stuff. Yeah, I don't think there would be any really inappropriate stuff it's not like six millimeter no but there is there's extremely inappropriate stuff and you might not see it when you click on Pornhub for free but if you swiped your credit card and paid a little bit of money you'd be seeing a whole different whack of porn okay I'll take your word for it. I, I don't know this first time. I know. I, I, just, I, I assume that's what I assume. How I know, it goes. but like, like you're when paying I paying for more explicit. Material. When I buy my snuff films, I get them off the dark web. I don't go to Pornhub. And disclosure, I don't watch snuff films, but. The, the only thing I've ever heard of a snuff film is from that movie Six Millimeter back in the day. <clears throat> Who was in that? Nick Cage? I don't even know. I thought it was going to be shot on... The movie would be shot in Six Millimeter. <laughs> I guess not. I think they were talking about the snuff films. Well, anyway. That's on a... Lighter topic. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, all of those amateurs should be getting paid something for making kinky fetish. Like, if I eat a pizza half naked and with every slice took a sock or a piece of clothing off, sure, you can make some good money just slamming pizza slices in your gullet. You know, I used to work in a hotel at a cafe and I one time got approached by this guy and he offered me money. He had a room rented upstairs and was shooting porn. And he was like legit, he had all these people with him and he had like a contract and like he was just talking to me. He was like, you don't have to sign anything, but he like literally offered me $200 just to come upstairs, not even to like do anything. But it had, like, paperwork, and he was like, oh, look this over, and I was like, yeah, I have a job, thanks. So, but, yeah, so people just go into cities and pick up young girls and sh shoot movies and offer them money, but it's not very much money. I mean, how does all that porn get on there for free?
people shoot it on their iPhones. <laughs> Do they sell it to the, the website? <clears throat> Is that how they make money? Yeah, I think that's what they were trying to, like, curb was, like, revenge porn and um, uncontracted, right? Because people would end up on the site without any consent sort of thing. They're just covering their asses for lawsuits, let's face it. Yeah streamline everybody towards their in-house production companies and get rid of all the good stuff. I haven't watched porn in a long time. I'm kind of off that. Thankfully. It's a bad addiction. Like, there's people who just live their entire lives in love with themselves, pretty much. <laughs> Making love to themselves. Yeah. And that's been Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> good, good quality good, yeah. Christmas talk here. Good family content. They arrested Peter Nygaard in Winnipeg. That's, that's right. We saw a photo, or not a photo, it was like one of those courthouse sketches of him appearing in court. I was at a New Year's Eve party once where he, well, at a restaurant where he showed up with two beautiful ladies on his arms. Now I realize he was just recruiting or looking to recruit young women for, uh... Creepy Peter Nygaard. I wonder if there'll be, like, a mass, like, Nygaard clothing burn. You know, like the way they used to burn books, they'll like burn Peter Nygaard clothing. I think I should just spearhead that whole thing. I've always <laughs> hated his clothes. Go like, into your grandma's closet and just start just throwing. Because I think it was clothes. it was all old lady yeah, clothing, it's right? All old lady clothing. Fucking weird. But I like some old lady clothing, but not Peter Nygaard's clothing. You know, a nice like parrot shirt with like some frill and some like what's it called what are those like golden <laughs> like a pin bedazzle or a lapel yeah. kind of thing yeah fucking gross clothes and a fucking gross man so the last couple of weeks we've been watching designated survivor with Kiefer Sutherland on Netflix. Yeah. First two seasons were okay. Third one, mm, I don't know. They got rid of the they, Secret Service they guy. They killed off some of the good main characters, so. Made it more like LGBTQ friendly. We were like really into it for a while though, like six episodes a night, just like plowing through it. And then it just slowly went on the down. We we finished. It's three seasons. It's like fifty episodes, and they're it was an hour good. each. I I thought a lot of the episodes were were well written, like relevant topics. Yeah, Pretty a lot of good, it. Good program content. A lot of it seemed like uh, they just wrote the opposite of what Trump was doing. Like, it was like an alternative reality. <laughs> like... Yeah. I liked Kiefer as the president. I thought he, uh, he was pretty good. Yeah, and this week we're watching Comedians in Cars with si Jerry Seinfeld. The great and honorable Jerry Seinfeld. I'm learning a lot about cars. I'm learning a lot about Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> I know, such what, beautiful cars. What's there though. to know about Jerry? He writes jokes, well, he's funny, and he's got lots of famous friends. He doesn't have the same hair game 
as he did in the 90s, though. What's, <laughs> what kind of statement is that? Oh, I'm going to be saying that about you in 30 years. I know. I already feel like I'm thinning a little bit here. Oh, that was an insecurity comment. <laughs> I'm very insecure, what can I say? I'll probably go bald before you do. Oh, God. I'm so attracted by bald women. That was a whole genre of porn that I got into. <laughs> women were shaving their heads. And then, what was it? They dip it in oil and rub it all over somebody's naked body. I think that was a Seinfeld episode. George mentioned that. Oh, yeah, George and the bald woman. Yeah. Yeah, we're coming into New Year's. It's the end of a decade. Everybody get ready for the 2021s. Last year was the end of a decade, huh? I guess so, yeah. Well, this is like the zero. Do you count the zero? You, you do. don't count a baby you, zero. You do count the zero, though. Because the day you're born is when your zero starts. I thought you count the one. Like you have to wait a whole year of being born before you count the one. Where you've already previously been yeah, alive for a full year. You celebrate year. the one. You've been alive for one year. But when you're one, you're into your second year. I don't want to have to start to explain math to you. Zero is totally where things start. Okay, I'll agree with I'll agree to disagree, but this was a uh, discussion where we've had contention before, not with you, but with other people. I was like, and we're back. My face hurts so bad right now. Like, I feel like I just shaved with a weed whacker. Did you? Well, it was one of those, like, one-blade pink leg shaver razors. I thought that was your... Oh, it hurts so bad. Where did you get that thing? Oh, I cheaped out. I don't know. I bought, like, one-dollar razors. Ooh. <sighs> you got your hot chocolate? Yes. Yes, I do have my hot chocolate. So this is the shave version of the podcast, talk show, coffee talk, we're talking amongst ourselves. Hot chocolate. Jeez, my face is just killing me. Are you going to complain for the rest of this? I think so. Oh. I need to go throw some snow on it. Ah, uh, it's gotta suck. Like it that never hurts when I shave my legs. In fact, I think I always feel better after shaving my legs. Do you feel better after you shave? No, never. No. No. So why don't you just grow it out then? Cause I'm in my mid thirties and I still have yet to be able to grow a beard. So. Mmm. <laughs> the cocoa is delicious. I love hot chocolate. I could just drink hot chocolate every day. You know, when I was having stomach problems, I just replaced the coffee with hot chocolate. I didn't miss coffee at all. I did gain five pounds, though, from drinking hot chocolate every day. I know, and usually I'd be a lot skinnier right now, too. But in the middle of a pandemic, maybe you want a little extra weight on you. Maybe. And you look beautiful in any way, shape, or form. You look beautiful. Oh, I'm sure. As I'm bleeding, from, my face feels like it's <clears throat> bleeding right now. My nose is running. I need a tissue. And we're back. This is the shaved part of the podcast. I think you already said that. I know, I think I already did too. 
So you decorated a beautiful Christmas tree this year. Yeah, it's okay. Where did you get that little thing? Uh, I'll have to put a picture in it. From Walmart. Decorations courtesy of the Dollarama. It's pretty budget, but it does the trick. Yeah. I don't even have a Christmas tree. I can't go to those lengths. I put up the aluminum pole. I think I miss having a real tree. We always had a real tree growing up. And this fake one is a sad wannabe. <clears throat> so have you heard about Rent-A-Tree? It's supposed to be this like sustainable Christmas tree business. So they grow trees to about this size and then you rent them for Christmas. And then after Christmas, you return the pot and they plant it. Interesting. In instead of throwing your Christmas tree out when you're done with it and cutting down a live tree to put into your house, it's a more sustainable option to have a real Christmas tree at Christmas. And I told you that I worked at a Christmas tree farm once, right? Yeah. As a kid. I think I was like 17. And we'd drive through rows and rows of evergreen trees and spray them with green paint. So they were green for the holidays. Yeah, that kind of broke my heart a little bit when you told me that. What else would we do? We'd like shape the tree. So it's got that perfect cone. Yeah, all that aesthetic. extra work you don't see that people do to get your Christmas tree perfect. I mean, in Manitoba, you're able to go to any ditch or watershed <laughs> and cut a tree down. If you do need a budget Christmas tree, you could just go saw it. But when there's three feet of snow, it's always difficult to get a Christmas tree. Yeah. And then squirrels or birds may live in there. Yeah, you're taking someone's home. Life on a shoestring budget. Okay. Ooh, the Ripper. We might yeah. have to watch some serial killer porn. One of the one of the ladies at work told me she watched it and that it was pretty grim. What do I call murder porn? It's murder just porn. like yeah, fa uh, fantasy stories about serial killers like Ted Bundy or Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh yeah, she was telling me about it, and I was totally thinking about that like South Park episode because she's like in her fifties and she's like her and her husband. She, they're always watching like crime yeah, shows, CSI, and a bunch of bullshit like that. Yeah, I'm like they're the, they're a murder porn couple. That's their thing. Just getting off on watching people, or like, I guess you're not watching people get murdered, but. Diagnosing hearing stories. <laughs> stories, hearing stories of someone getting murdered. I mean, I guess it happens. This guy ain't no murderer. You, I'm not too sure about it, though. Killer. Killer on a rampage. Great Eddie Grant song. Uh, I prefer Killer Queen by Queen. Freddie Mercury probably was a murderer. Now, okay, I won't defame Freddie Mercury like that, but no, it's not possible. No one can have the voice of an angel like that and be a murderer. I don't believe it. Now, Pavarotti. <laughs> I get getting sl slashed to death by one of the tenors. <laughs> While he's singing opera and murdering you. That'd be an epic way to Lord. go. <laughs> yeah. So we've covered murder and snuff films. Porn. Some Christmas stuff. 
Good old $50 Walmart Christmas tree. Now, are you a fake Christmas tree girl, or do you like real trees? I like real trees, but I have a fake tree because I don't want to have a real Christmas tree every single year. But I'm going to look into this rent-a-tree thing for next year. Ooh. Those needles make such a mess in the house. I know, but I love the smell. You know, there's nothing like having the smell of a real Christmas tree to invoke the Christmas spirit. Okay, okay. How about Yule logs? You a Yule log person? No. We had a fireplace when I was a kid, but, um, like, I like campfires. What, what's exact, what, what's a Yule log? Is it just a glorified seasonal... I think it's just a Can't log fire. with a candle in the middle of it. I don't get it. Okay. Yeah, this really took a turn for the worst. I, I don't know what to talk about now. <laughs> I'm so envious of Jerry Seinfeld and his cars. I mean, then I wouldn't... You'd have to hire a mechanic if you had all those cars. Like, or be a mechanic. But come on, who wants to be a mechanic? Getting your hands all dirty. Some people. You like want to be responsible for tightening your lug nuts on your wheels. Some people like that kind of thing. Like I can change tire, but I wouldn't go drive across the country with that change tire. Can you change a tire? In theory. Or is that what you have me for? It's what I have a CAA card for. Oh, that makes sense, too. Now that's different from AA. Yep. That's just when you need a change in your life. Yeah, oh, we came in, like you had mentioned earlier, we're into the solstice now, first day of winter. What is it, the 22nd of December? That's right. And then we have this uh, star of Bethlehem, Saturn and Venus. It happens once every 800 years. The great conjunction. Dun, dun, dun. Is it because they're conjoined? Uh, they look like they're conjoined from our point of view. No, but we don't call I, uh, Siamese twins conjunctive twins. Are you sure that's... No, I think they do call them conjoined. <laughs> I think they do, yeah. Conjoined. Man, this hot chocolate's good. Thanks to our sponsor of Tim Hortons and their <laughs> wonderful hot chocolate mix. We went to the store. There's no other hot chocolate. Looked like someone bought that whole they, shelf of hot they chocolate. They were cleaned out of hot chocolate. Or did we just purchase, like, a bad batch of hot chocolate and they just threw it all in the garbage? I don't know. I, I wasn't happy with, with the options. It was No Name or Tim Hortons, and I, I wanted something else. But that last one we had tastes like coconutty almost. Remember, it had like some, I think it was like the palm oil or something yeah, in there it. Yeah, was, there was, it had a coconut it taste off. to it. Yeah, I wasn't a fan. But the organic one we had before that, I liked that one. Yeah. I wonder what makes it organic, though. All chocolate's kind of grown in a forest, I think. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. In Sierra Leone. Maybe it wasn't organic. It was fair trade ethical. Oh, oh there it is. Excuse me. It was, it was organic, but it was the fair trade chocolate that was distinctive about it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the difference between organic and inorganic, <sighs> unorganic chocolate exactly is. Tastes the same to me. 
<sighs> it's all owned by one guy. The president of Ukraine. The chocolate man. King. The chocolate king. The <laughs> chocolate king. Don't they call him something like that? Yeah, but you're right. I think it's the chocolate king. Chocolate czar. Number <laughs> one of the world. But then you have to own like a small African country to get your chocolate to, to market. So maybe Willy Wonka wasn't that nice of a guy after all. No, he saved the Oompa Loompas. He didn't enslave them. <laughs> no, no that, that's, that's the, the president of Ukraine who <laughs> enslaved people for his chocolate trip. Hey, don't call the Ukraine's Oompa Loompas. <laughs> <clears throat> They're quite rosy-cheeked and small peoples. Hey there, how's everyone doing? So, we're almost into January. Has it been a good year for you? It's been a crazy year. A lot a lot happened this year. A lot of nothing. Like what? Name three things that's happened. Um, Don't divulge too much. Well, I got engaged. I got unengaged. I uh, ended up back with me. Ended back up with you. And my son was out of school for months on end. Uh, had you a lot of moved into this lovely new place. Moved into a new place. You know, had a lot of changes at work over the last little while. But got, thankfully you're still working. Got some money. I had some money fall into my hands this year. Ooh. I haven't done anything with it yet. I'm just sitting on it. If you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah, but if you don't spend it, then you're saving it. <laughs> I guess, yeah. What about you? How how has the year been for you? Highlights, low, completely lows. uneventful. Uh, spent months and months alone. I was walking every single day, and then I stopped walking every single day. I was into that whole like ten thousand steps. Now I probably don't have ten thousand steps for the entire month, but. <clears throat> you did you did a good couple loops at the grocery store today, so I've been not doing a lot. Trying to create as much bullshit content as possible. Not marketing it at all or making any money off it, but it's something. The struggle is real. I like the struggle. I don't know. I don't let things get me down too bad. I think sometimes you don't really know what you're doing when you start something, but as long as you're having fun, you're probably doing a good thing. Yeah. If it makes you happy. Make other people happy. They can at least compare their lives to our uneventful lives and say, hey, I did more than these two P schmucks. <laughs> yeah. Overall, it's been a great year. I kind of needed, I felt like we were moving at too fast of a pace, like the world, not just uh, us. But. You know, all of a sudden you realize you don't need all those useless toys or like I don't even know what people spend their money on anymore like I would like to get into the health kick again and start cycling and exercising but I rode the bike the other day indoor bike mm -hmm. yeah that's good 
I gotta bring some runners over. I mean, I was so calorie deficient for such a long time. The exercise became like obs almost. I was obsessive about it to the point where it was doing more harm than good. Like, I don't want to become obese, but having a little extra weight on isn't a bad thing. Especially if, like, I started worrying they're going to shut down the grocery stores and, like, leave people, like, the apocalypse would turn into Mad Max all of a sudden and people would be breaking your door down for a can of beans and some vegetables or something. Yep. That's when you know that... Eating their dogs. Society and, has fallen apart is when the grocery stores close. Yeah. When your parents invite you over to eat their pets with them <laughs> sort of thing that's when you know we've hit rock bottom yeah without getting too far into it I'm not suicidal anymore so that's a good thing <laughs> Suicide's bad. Seek help if you need. And uh, don't ever do the one ultimate selfish act is take yourself away from others. There's somebody out there that cares and loves you, loves you very much. That's my PSA. Well, I can probably wrap it up pretty soon. My face is fucking killing me almost my bedtime yeah you've been getting up or five in the morning you gotta love no traffic though, right? I love it I fly I swerve nobody's there to honk their horn or yell at you or make me late or cut me off yep it's the best have you noticed that like with less places open, like restaurants and things, there's less people out on the street? Yeah, for sure. Everyone's kind of scrambling, looking for things to buy for the holidays, or... More people who have money to spend. Yeah, what are you spending on? Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Thanks to Tim Hortons for this wonderful experience of sitting on the couch having hot cocoa. I'm hot now. You're sweating. Okay. I'd like to thank everybody. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. All that good jazz. Um, work hard. Let's hope this super ultra contagious COVID-19 doesn't sweep the globe and force everybody into the forest. Are you going to get the vaccination? I don't know. You don't know. Probably. You're going to take the sauce? Yeah. If they give you the sauce, you're going to take the sauce? If they offer me the sauce, I'll probably take the sauce. We were just talking at work today, me and my co-worker, about traveling. And her sister uh, lives in the States, and her husband is doing his residency he's a doctor and he was supposed to be coming home for christmas and he took a covid test right before he left left and it came positive and now he can't fly home for christmas oh yeah so the sister's sad and she has a new baby and her husband won't be there for his first christmas and we we're just talking about the tight travel restrictions like 
I'd take the vaccination if it meant that I could get on a plane and like take a trip somewhere. Yeah, I would for that reason. We're all going to need medical passports by next year. The way things are, yeah, I, I see it headed like that. Why don't we just get chips in our hands already? Viva la resistance. <laughs> Go live in the bush. <laughs> well, we don't all get chips because lots of people wouldn't be for it. But, you know, I, I'd consider hearing the argument before I said no. You could purchase things at Amazon stores, just walk just in. Just swipe. Out. Just swipe everywhere. <laughs> it's the future, man. The future's unknown. The future. Buy the ticket, take the ride, I'm said waiting. Joe Strummer. I'm waiting for that arm phone. <clears throat> or a tooth phone? Keep. <clears throat> well, say bye to everybody. Bye to everybody. This has been another episode of the Unshaved and Shaved podcast. Now talk amongst yourselves, said the great Mike Myers from an SNL skit from about 15 years ago. Thanks, everyone. Have a great holiday. Stay safe, take care of the ones you love, and be happy. You, you know what else Mike Meyer said? What? Get in my belly. Get in my belly. <laughs> I want my baby back, baby back ribs. <laughs> <laughs>